Hey guys, it's Steve Frank, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Oracle's so-called flashback capabilities. Uh, this is a really neat feature of Oracle. Um, I'll get on the soapbox for a second and just talk about Oracle versus some other databases. I would say probably for your average run-of-the-mill uh, business application, the database you pick doesn't matter a heck of a lot. Um, if you're choosing versus between, let's say, MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, IBM's DB2, and a host of other database management systems, let's say for small to mid-size applications, there's not a heck of a lot of difference in terms of how those will perform or advantages you'll get from one or the other. You know, they, all, they all behave fairly similarly. But Oracle is, is considered king of the hill in terms of market share, and it's been around quite a while, uh, as is DB2. But in any case, Oracle has some nice features that uh, are not things you need all of the time, but when you do need them, or when they are useful, they're really, really nice to have. And Flashback is one of those examples of a feature that, to my knowledge, at least among major databases, is really only available in Oracle today, and it can make a big difference. Um, it can save you a lot of time and pain. The basic idea of Flashback is that we can see the state of the database as it was at a certain point in time without doing a point in time recovery. Pretty much any major database package out there will allow you to do point in time recovery, look through the transaction log files and you know, make the database state as it was at a certain point in time. But flashback in Oracle is kind of like a little time machine where I can basically see what the data looked like without actually affecting the state of the database. And there are just so many circumstances in which that's kind of a really cool, nice thing to have. So we're going to run through a quick sample scenario of how one might use flashback. Uh, but one thing to do first is to make sure that we are running in archive log mode. What flashback is going to do when we run it is basically look through the log history of the database and reconstruct the state of the database as it was at a certain point in time. So it's a lot like point in time recovery, except we're not actually going to apply those changes to the data files. Oracle's just going to kind of figure out what the data would have looked like for you. So to use flashback, we'd have to make sure that we are running in archive log mode. Uh, I'm currently logged in as system, uh, probably with the sysdba role as well as I usually do in these videos. So I'm just going to do a quick archive log list. And what are we? We are in archive mode. Okay, so to make sure that I can do flashback, I want to make sure I, I take a backup. And in some previous videos, I've been doing backup and recovery exercises. Uh, something I should have mentioned in the past was, after you do a restore using any of the backup and recovery techniques, pretty much the first thing you should do once you verify that things got the way you would like them to be is take another backup. So before I do anything with flashback here, I'm going to take a backup to make sure I have one good solid backup set in place for the data as it currently stands. Um, I'm going to shut up now and probably fast forward this part of the video because you guys have seen this a number of times. Alright, my backup is done there. I have a good solid backup. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, um, there's a schema that comes by default with Oracle XC when you install it. It's called the HR schema. So there's this HR user that owns a number of tables. I can see what those tables are if I do something like this. Select table underscore name from, now well, I'll use DD tables, where owner equals HR. This a query like this will let me see the tables for a particular user. I run this guy and I see that there are a bunch of tables, regions, locations, departments, jobs, etc. Obviously you guys can read. I could do describes on those to see their structure. Let's pose a little scenario. Let's say that there is a certain user in this organization. I'm going to look in the this person's employee ID is 101 and I'm going to see who that is. Okay. Oh. Ah. It is Nina. Nina, we can see lots of interesting information about her. We can look at her job ID and it says AD underscore VP. Hmm. I happen to know that there's a jobs table here. So why don't I go see what her job consists of? Oh, she's an administration vice president. 
looks like she might be the number two in the organization if we just infer from title and salary, so she's pretty high up there. Well, it turns out that that's not the only thing she's done over the course of her time with the organization. There's a table out there called HR job underscore history that talks about positions employees have had in the past. I'll do a quick describe of it for us. You can just see what tables are in there. All right, so I have an employee ID, start and end date, and what job they had in what department. Seems fairly innocuous. Well, what jobs has Nina had? Let's see, AC account and AC manager. What are those? Uh, accounting manager, public accountant, seems pretty respectable to us, but I guess Nina doesn't like the idea that uh, her job history in these lowly public accountant positions, etc., relative to her current role, doesn't like the idea that those are recorded in the database. And she says, I want you to delete those things, database administrator, from the job history. I don't want the records of my previous positions kept there. You say, okay, you're the boss, I can go and do that for you. So to do so, I guess uh, what I'd have to do is I would delete my records from HR job history where they have your employee ID. Let me see. I am going to set auto commit on. This will make any changes I make committed immediately, so I'll have to type the commit statement. And I am supremely competent in my SQL skills, so I'm going to go ahead and run this command. Something distracting happens, something distracting happens. I paste, and I go. Uh-oh. I didn't want to run that. I just ran delete from HR job underscore history. What I wanted to run, delete from HR job underscore history where employee ID equals 101. I wanted to get rid of just her historical records, and now I've gotten rid of everybody's records. Hmm, that's not so good. Now, obviously it's a trivial amount of data, and, oh, I thought we had selected it previously. Okay, so we have, right now, no way to get that information back. We only have the information that was for Nina, which is the thing that I wanted to delete anyway. I've done a commit complete, which basically means the data is permanently saved. Trying to do a rollback at this point is not gonna work for me. So, what are my options? I could do a point in time recovery here, back until a couple of minutes ago. I'm going to say 12.52 or 12.53 would have been, uh, I'm just looking at my system clock down here in the lower right hand corner. That would have been a decent time to do a point in time recovery to. But, um, you know, that would really disrupt the entire database. I have other people using this database for things and I don't want to take the whole thing down to do this point in time recovery. Wouldn't it be nice if I could at least see what the data looked like way back when? With the Miracle flashback, we can do that. I have select star from job underscore history, basically whatever query you want, and then the flashback syntax is as of timestamp, and then you throw in this to timestamp function where you use what Oracle calls a format model to specify a particular time. And what do we say? This happened, I'll well, just say around 12.53. I'm putting this, you see it's in 24 hour time, hour, hour 24. So that's right, I'll flip these two. And I'll say, I want to see what the data in that table looked like as of 12.53 a.m. today. And if that doesn't quite look as I'd expect, I can play around with that timestamp a little bit. So let's see what happens here. I run this. Uh, somewhere messed up here. Line variable 53. I think this might be it. I want to use straight quotes. This is probably better. This is what you get for copying out of PowerPoint. Okay. Take my query here. Run it. Huh. Lo and behold, Oracle was able to go back through the transaction logs and reconstruct the data as of that particular moment. So it's all there. Now how do I get it back in the table? 
Well, here's a simple trick. I can do insert into hr.jobhistory and then the select star query. This is basically going to take the contents of the select query and then you feed them into an insert statement and stuff them back in the table. Boom, and commit is complete. Now I'll just run an ordinary select star if I could type hr.job underscore history boom and my data is back just as it was at 12.53 a.m. before I screwed it up with my erroneous delete statement in which I unintentionally omitted the where clause. So now the data is back, it's restored whole, I can go ahead and run my query again, this time not forgetting the where clause, but the point here was that I lost some data. It was totally gone. Because I was running in archive log mode, and because Oracle has the flashback facility, I could use a little bit of special sauce in my query syntax, and that's this stuff up here, this as of timestamp clause. And I could see the data as it existed at a certain point in time. And to do that, what Oracle did is it um, went back through the transaction logs, and it kind of undid some things and it reconstructed what the data would have looked like at that particular moment and it returned the information to me. And from there, it was just sort of a trivial uh, twist in my SQL to say, all right, I'm going to feed that into an insert statement and put that table back the way it should have been. We could imagine lots of variations on the principle. But again, the key idea here is I didn't have to do a point in time recovery that infected the entire database, had availability implications, would have possibly set other people's transactions back, etc. I just did an isolated flashback for a particular table and restored one particular set of data. It's a real cool feature to have. It'll save your, your you-know-what in, uh, in a number of instances, and not many database products have it. As I said, I think Oracle is the only major one, or at least it's the only one of which I'm aware that uh, has this particular capability right now. So it's a cool thing to have. Thanks for your time, folks. Appreciate it.